All right, so here are five reasons why you should not become a data analyst. First, data analytics is a great career. It's great pay, flexible work, and it's high demand. But here's the thing, becoming a data analyst isn't for everyone. And if you don't know the downsides going in, you're probably gonna be shocked after investing so much time learning the skills and looking for jobs. How do I know? I've helped dozens of people get jobs in data, and trust me, I've seen too many people quit because they didn't know what to expect. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you honestly if being a data analyst is actually right for you or not. If these challenges don't scare you off, you're probably a good fit for this career. Reason number five, you'll never stop learning. And I mean never. Here's the misconception. Tools like SQL and Excel have been around for decades. People think that once you learn them, you're good to go, you're all set. But the reality is there's a constant flow of new tools, methods, and trends that you'll need to learn. And with AI moving faster than ever, this is only getting worse. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. So I've had to learn many new tools since I started my career as a data analyst. I started my career mainly using Tableau as my BI tool, then had to adopt Power BI. Eventually I had to learn tools like Power Power Automate, Snowflake, and even HTML as the problems I was solving became more and more advanced. I also had to adopt new tools as I began to shift to other companies with different tech stacks. But AI has made the adoption of these new tools and languages more approachable than ever. That's because AI makes it easier to code. So again, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So what does this mean? If you want to study hard, get a job, and then coast, it's probably not going to happen. You'll likely be learning new technologies for your entire career. Here's the positive side of that. If you're genuinely passionate about data, learning feels exciting. It's what separates those in it for money versus those who love the work. And by the way, if you are trying to become a data analyst but feeling stuck, check out my 90-day coaching program that includes unlimited support until you land a job. Link in the description below. Okay, reason number four, you'll spend more time talking than coding. Here's what people expect. You're working alone with clean data, you're coding in solitude, you got your hoodie on in a dark room with your, your LED lights going and it's just a vibe. Now sometimes Sometimes that's the case, but the reality is that most of your time is communication and meetings. Talking to people to figure out what they actually want, having stakeholder meetings, explaining those findings to stakeholders who don't speak data. So this was a surprise to me when I first started my career in data, but it's something I actually really appreciate about the job. While I do love deep work and I do have those times, I also enjoy working with others. So for me, data analytics is the perfect balance between the two. So here's the challenge. If you're not comfortable or skilled in communicating, this will be difficult. Communication is a key data analyst skill, and it is something you can improve, but you have to keep that in mind going in. The bottom line is if you want a job where you work on interesting things in solitude, data analytics may not be for you. Reason number three, your brain never shuts off. And here's the good news. Data analysts can have pretty good work-life balance. It's one of the things that makes the career so attractive. But here's the catch. You'll be solving problems that require a lot of creativity and a lot of deep thinking. You're the person who has to solve the problems. And sometimes they're very tricky problems. So what does this look like? It's like always having a browser tab open in the back of your mind sometimes. Thinking about work problems when you work out, thinking about them during dinner, even thinking about them when you go to sleep. And some people find this stressful, but others love the constant demand for creative thinking and problem solving. For me, I like challenging problems, so I actually don't mind this. I like it when I'm handed a very difficult problem that I have to really think outside the box in order to solve. All right, so let's move on to reason number two. It's not technical enough for some people. So data analytics does require some technical skills, like we've already mentioned, uh, SQL, Power BI, Python, R, whatever, but it's not the most technical role. You don't need years of programming experience or a strong computer science background. Here's the problem. If you have a strong technical background and want something really technical, data analytics may or may not be for you. It depends on the role because the title data analyst can vary greatly between companies. I came into data from a non-technical background and am definitely not the most advanced person technically. But like I mentioned before, the balance between technical and non-technical has been perfect for me personally. And seeing that early on is what drew me to the field. More technical roles typically pay more money even though they require more training. Roles like data engineering, and data scientists, even software engineering, if that's your thing. But there's a lot of flexibility. You can start as a data analyst and transition later. Or stick around if it's your true passion. You can have an entire career as a data analyst and be perfectly content. Now finally, let's get to reason number one, the money ceiling, compared to other tech roles. So let's talk data analyst salaries. Beginners will typically start around 60K, for entry level roles, maybe more. A very experienced data analytics can make upwards of 140, 150K or more, especially as you're getting into senior data analyst roles. So when you compare data analytics to other technical roles, there's a comparison problem at times. More technical roles typically pay 
way more money, goals like data engineering or data scientists. Working alongside these people, you might feel like you're missing out. To be perfectly honest, I have felt this at times, but I know that as you progress in your career, there will always be opportunities to become more technically advanced and move up as you develop more experience and your goals change. Like any career, it takes time to progress. And like I mentioned, you start off as a data analyst and move on to a more technical role like data science. Here's the current market reality. Entry level positions are incredibly competitive. It's a tough market. So it may not offer the best pay initially. I've worked with people who have made significantly more in other career paths, but wanted to transition into data analytics. So they actually took a pay cut to make the move, but they looked at it as a long-term investment. So that may be the case for you, maybe not. For a lot of people, they're actually taking a pay increase because entry-level data analyst roles typically pay more than other entry-level roles in other fields. The upside to all this is once you get over those first initial struggles, it does get much better. Data analysts are needed and it's still a great career choice. Data analyst roles are becoming more in demand than ever, despite whatever you may hear about AI and layoffs. The trend is that data analyst jobs are trending upwards, not downwards. So if you're still motivated after watching this video, then chances are becoming a data analyst is something for you. And by the way, if you're serious about adding 20 to 50K to your income in a job you actually like, then click the first link in the description to chat with me about your next steps. Check out this video for more because YouTube thinks you'll like it and I'll see you in the next one.